Hey family, it's Tosh Marva prepping. So welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. You already know what time it is. Get your drink, pull up, boop, boop, boop. And let's get into it. So watching the news like normal, just watching all these um, natural disaster, um, you know, newscasting things that are happening around the country. Um, you know, also just hey, warnings, different things are about to, you know, um, spark up. Um, I think that it is important for you to identify and realize things that happen in your area where you live and then you are preparing for that. So a lot of times people ask me, you know, well, what are you preparing for? Or somebody will say, I'm preparing, but I'm not really sure why. Well, it starts with you identifying your um, local stuff that you should be dealing with. This can be stuff that the country, the world is dealing with um, as well. but. I always like to start with what are the natural disasters, the different seasons of crisis, emergency crisis that are susceptible in your area where you live, in your state, in your county, town, city, whatever. And then you prepare um, for that, right? That's where you start. And then from there you can branch out to the other stuff. I'm gonna give you an example. I'm gonna use myself as an example and I'm gonna tell you the stuff that, um, that we prepare for here in Washington state where we physically live. Okay. So simple things, fire season. We have a season here where things get very, very dry and we have to worry about fires, maybe not as severe as Southern California. Um, but we definitely have a fire season. We definitely have fire bans. We have time periods where there's no fires to be lit. Um, it gets very, very serious here. Okay. So fire season's about to start for us. So that's kind of where this started for me earthquake right the big one um we're on a huge fault line that is going to erupt one day that is going to be what they say the big one is all up and down the coast and um and that is going to make my my next thing that we prepare for and that tsunami things that you should be concerned about if you're in washington state and really depending on where you're at in washington state um for us is we're worried about the big one earthquake um which would cause a tsunami um, we worry about fires here. We worry about flooding. So flooding is not crazy, but I say flooding because one last year winter time got really, really nasty and we had a really, really bad flooding situation here where all of a sudden, um, the flooding was much, much higher, what much, much more of a big deal here than in recent years right and i've always been one to always prepare for flooding because um as you can see on the news there's all types of examples and places that are going through having flash flooding and having flooding and what's crazy is this weather is crazy you guys and this is places that are having flooding that don't normally have flooding right they're not they're 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 all of a sudden having some time frames where or seasons where they're having these extreme flooding situations extreme flash flooding um horrible houses being floated away really really bad and how do you prepare for that right and we prepare for that just because um, for me we're in a state that has lots of bodies of water you know it rains a lot here and so for us naturally to prepare for flooding to, oh, has always made sense to me okay so we've always prepared for that even though we haven't necessarily had any major major catastrophic events last year we did have places had to shut down there was warnings put out it, it got pretty nasty in some spots this last year um so we continue to watch it and it's something that we prepare for um then we get into further stuff that I am concerned about. I'm concerned about nuclear war, not just because I'm some nutty nut case with my tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist, but because we live by military bases. We live close enough to a major, major communication system um, base that any enemy would find as a threat and would try to take out okay so when we talk about missiles we talk about it doesn't matter what kind nuclear radiological it could be um even just emp any of that stuff we are in an area where i feel like 
um, we are close enough that that is a concern and that is something that we prepare for because of that reason. If I was somewhere else, maybe I wouldn't, I would worry about it, but I wouldn't worry about it to the sense that when the, when the bombs drop, I know that it's coming to our door. I know it's coming here, right? And so that's the difference of um, where you live and, and preparing for it and, and understanding and understanding the, the, the chances that if it does happen, what's the chances of where you live truly, truly having to deal with that. And I know that we're in an area where we're going to have to deal with that. And a lot of people would be like, well, why would you stay? Why would you stay? Well, there's a lot of other reasons why I stay that have to do with that, that have to do with weather patterns, wind patterns, all of that stuff. Okay. So, um, preparedness is a big picture thing. And, um, at the end of the day, you gotta you gotta trust in God anyway. So that's what it is. Next thing um, we uh, prepare for is crime is through the roof everywhere, and so we prepare for crime. We prepare for that crime to come to our doorstep. We prepare for marauders. We pre we prepare when it comes to fortification of our home, and someday somebody trying to uh, penetrate, get through to steal from us or to get things from us. And then just the other thing that that everybody should be preparing for or should be thinking about and that's medical crisis you know yeah i know people don't want to talk about COVID anymore they're they're over it um but i'm beyond COVID. yeah am i still tracking COVID? sure um do i care about the numbers am i paying attention sure um but i'm more concerned about the things to come the pandemics to come and so preparing for that what could be the things so let's get into steps like what would you do to prepare for this so first thing is identifying what's the normal stuff that happens in your area right are you down south and you have you're in a valid tracking system for your in tornado season you're and you're in the tracking area where there's tornadoes are you preparing for hurricanes because you live somewhere where there's a hurricane season is there a fire season is there an earthquake season right is there a heavy heavy rain season where you know flooding comes mudslides come um, wh what do you live by do you live by any kind of volcanoes that's another thing right um, what do you live by that could have a situation what's the norm right what is the norm that happens every single year okay we have a fire season every single year we know that's coming um, and there's preparedness that is involved with um, fire and even down to plants that we have trees bushes that we have on our property we have bushes that are a huge fire um, they're they're huge they're fast climbing trees right um, hedges they're in the middle of our backyard if you've seen any of the tours in my backyard um, and those are coming down and I hate I cannot even tell you how much I hate cutting down a tree but those have to come down because they are extremely extremely dry inside even during the rain season and um, that it's a huge fire hazard they, they will just not help in any kind of fire type situation okay um, and then next you're identifying what's what could happen right taking it a step further on what could happen um you know maybe maybe there's no rivers around you there's no water around you you're like there's no way there could be any kind of flash flooding but all it takes is a heavy storm to be over you over your town and drop drop buckets and buckets of water and then all of a sudden you have flash flooding so you could be in a place where hey you don't have to deal with that um but if it did happen if there is any part of the year where it does rain like crazy just you got to think outside the box and not just be like well i'm just going to prepare for the stuff that i know is for a fact is going to happen do you start with that stuff absolutely but then you need to at some point you have to expand your your thought process um and what you're preparing for okay all right, from there, you're building your kits. What do you need to prepare for these things? As simple as that, right? Run your list out. What is your supplies? What is the stuff you need? Get that stuff little by little, budget it in, and check it off your list and get it done, right? So get your kits done. Uh, the big thing that we prepare for is grid down, and that's not really a thing. To me, that's something that can happen in any of these natural disasters, any of these crises could result in a grid down situation right could you have just a grid down situation by itself right the grid fails for whatever reason and you have to prepare for that yes however i think that it's very smart to prepare for grid down anyway because any of these things could happen any storm hurricane tornado earthquake fires all of that stuff can ensue and then lead to a grid down situation right and so preparing for no power i always tell people if you prepare for one thing that's the thing to prepare for because 
it helps you prepare for all those other things. Let's just say you moved to a hurricane area and you didn't know. Let's just say you were younger, you just bought a house, your area, you just didn't really know yet, right? If you're preparing for grid down, you've got your solar generators, you've got your food, you've got your water, medical supplies, you've got your stuff and a hurricane happens. Yes, is there other things that you would wanna do for preparedness to protect your home, right? And think about your home when you were moving to a hurricane area, absolutely. But those things I just mentioned will take you far, okay, from um, for surviving through that, right? As far as no help coming in, no power, um, and you being able to continue to live life where you live right after a crisis. Um, next thing I have is build your emergency plans, right? Physically write them out. You need to get a pen and paper and write out, okay, hurricane season's coming. What supplies do we need for hurricane season? What things do we need to put in place? Then you're writing, okay, what is our plan if we have if we stay here? What's the plan? What's the plan if we lose power? What's the plan if, if nobody's home? How do we get the kids home? Who's getting the kids? All of this stuff. What's your evacuation plan? Is there stuff in the car? Is there is there evacuation bags packed? Where would you go? Do you already have the money put aside for when you do leave, right? That's another thing is people pack an evacuation bag, but then they don't pack, um, they don't have the money set aside already with that bag to pay for hotels, to pay for gas to get somewhere, right? And so that stuff's very, very important so that you have the money to be able, because let's say something happens and you can't get to your money, but yet you need to get gas. You need to um, move and get to a hotel and get somewhere where you can stay, okay? So you got to think about the financial stuff and preparing for that stuff too, okay? Okay. Um, next thing I have is, um, and, and really last thing is, prepare to get information when things happen, right? Um, get your alert apps for these different things, right? Get a fire app that tells you where the fire apps are. Even a news app, your local news app that will keep you up to date on stuff. Um, tornado warnings, uh, you name it, different alerts. Get you an AM, FM radio. A subscriber gave me a tip a while ago and said he has an AM, FM radio, but he also has all his alerts on his phone. And every single time he gets, um, he gets alerted and um, one of them is faster than the other. I can't remember which one he said was faster. Um, but having those multiple ways to get information, to be notified, um, download those apps and, and be paying attention. Just having a basic AM, FM radio to understand and pay attention to what's going on because if something happens, now your internet went down, the power went down, you can't watch the news, you can't just get on the internet and get stuff and you can't rely on, oh, well, my cell phone company will come through. That, that might not be the case, okay? If certain towers go down or whatever the case may be okay you know preparing this game is is uh very very overwhelming to a lot of people it's just like there's too, there's too much to prepare for there's uh too many things to get but i think it boils down to this if you prepare for grid down you're ready for a lot of stuff and to you just start with what you know is going to happen every year in your area what happens in your area all the time Maybe you live up north in the mid the mid states, but up north, and and you don't really have any craziness. But say you have really heavy, you know, you have a heavy heavy snow in this in the winter time, right? Or maybe you're in the open plains up there, and you know, wind is crazy. You guys have these crazy crazy wind storms. Well, you would prepare for that, right? How do you prepare your home for that? For damage for building stuff and having it way more strength than normal. Um, how do you protect animals? All, all of these things matter, right? Um, everybody has something where they live that they have to deal with, okay? You live in Chicago, guess what's my number one prep? Prepping against, for fortification, prepping against crime, prepping against protecting myself because crime is crazy there, right? People get shot all the time, right? That's a major thing. It, maybe it's not the storm that comes every year, there's a season, whatever. Maybe it's a, something as simple as you live somewhere where it's crazy dangerous and you are preparing for protection to protect yourself, right? It's crime that you're protect that you're preparing for, right? It's marauders, it's the fortification piece, it's the security piece, okay? So this doesn't have to look like the same for everybody. This isn't a playbook, black and white. Though this is what exactly what you should prepare for. What you prepare for is natural disasters, emergency crisis, seasons of things that happen for a fact in your area. And then once you've kind of got that unlocked, just expand your thought process a little bit and think about the what ifs. What if this happened? 
what if this this has me concerned okay and then you go off of that and make sure you have those things as well okay so i hope somebody got something out of this i would love to hear your comments below i was busy yesterday i did not i don't think i've looked at comments for yesterday's video at all um so hopefully you guys got the word about how things are going to change next week um and we'll go from there baby i'm very very excited to get started on um some new looks for some stuff and um you know uploading a bunch of affiliate links for you guys um uh, and hopefully just bringing you a little bit better quality videos um you know just to help facilitate especially when i do videos with lists and stuff having that stuff listed out that type of thing to just help a little bit um better when you're taking notes right um because a lot of my videos they they, they are like note taking type videos and i and i understand that and just me talking sometimes that you trying to keep up with writing um i know is not always the easiest so i'm gonna work on my editing stuff as well and um i'm excited to see um what changes come about um with my open with having more whiteboard time to do other stuff other projects that i want to do both personal and for the channel so blessings from my bear cave to yours you guys have a wonderful day i know it's friday so happy friday i hope your day if you have a work day goes fast if you're at home like me chilling um doing the things enjoying what you do do that too and i hope that you have a, a great day easing into the weekend and i'll see you guys tomorrow on the next video take care bye